We are back on the record in cause number 940D09328, the state of Texas versus Daniel Villegas. We are ready to begin our third day of testimony. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Good morning. Good morning. You know, that good morning's getting better and better every day. I mean, you guys are, are doing good. You look you look rested, which is good. We're going to continue with testimony this morning. Mr. Montoya, Ms. Butterworth, call your next witness. Yes, they call Consuelo Padilla. Not sworn in. Shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help we God. Please be seated. Do me a favor, get that microphone close to you. For the record, ma'am, I do need your name. I need you to spell your last name for us. Consuelo Padilla, P A D I L L A. Mr. Montoya, you Thank you, Judge. Uh, good morning, ma'am. Good morning. How are you doing today? A little nervous. A little nervous? Yeah. Okay. Uh, could you please introduce yourself to the members of the jury? Tell them your name and where you're employed right now. Uh, my name is Consuelo Padilla. I'm also known as Connie. That's just easier than Consuelo. Um, I currently live in California and I work for the Department of Corrections in California. I am actually, job title is an office technician. I am actually um, a secretary for the education department in the prison. And uh, Mrs. Padilla, back in 1993, where were you living? I was living in the Northeast um, with my parents. Here in El Paso? Yes. Are you from El Paso? I am. Okay. And back in 1993, uh, Padilla is your married name, is that correct? Correct. What was your name, what was your maiden name in 93? Rojas. Rojas. And back in 1995, uh, Mrs. Padilla, where were you working? Do you remember? Yes, it was. Okay. I worked at Chevron. Okay. Which, and while you were there at Chevron, uh, what was your job there at Chevron? I was a cashier. Okay. How long do you think you were working there? I worked there a year. Okay. And uh, in March of 1995, uh, did you have an opportunity to come into contact with a person by the name of Daniel Villegas? I don't recall. You don't recall? Correct. Okay. Um, did you give a statement about uh, your interaction with Mr. Villegas in 1995? I did. Okay. Have you had an opportunity to see that statement? I have. And if I showed it to you today, would you recognize it? I, I, I don't recall the day, okay. but the statement, if it says that I gave the statement, then I did. Okay. And if I showed it to you, would you recognize your signature on it? Yes, sir. Okay. Your Honor, may I approach the witness? Yes, sir. Mrs. Padilla, I'm handing you this witness statement. Uh, and up at the top, uh, whose name is that? Connie Rojas. Okay. That's your name? Yes. And it has uh, a date of birth and a social. Yes. Are those yours as well? It is, correct. Okay. And, ma'am, looking at the statement here, do you recall uh, Do you recall making it? I do not. You do not. Okay. Is this your signature down here? It is. When you gave the statement, would you were you telling the truth? Yes. Okay. Would you have any reason to lie? No. When you gave the statement, did you have a memory of what's being talked about in it? Can you say that again, please? Sure. When you made the statement, did you have knowledge about what you were saying? Yes. You knew it then? Yes. You don't remember it now? No, I do not. Re reading it now, does this refresh your memory in any way? No. Okay. Your Honor, at this time I'd ask to publish the statement uh, under a hearsay exception as a recorded recollection under 803.5. Any objection? Yes, Your Honor. We, we, we object. It's a hearsay statement. She has indicated she does not remember. It is their witness. It's not being called by the adverse party. Sustained. May, may, may we approach? May we approach? 
May I proceed? Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. My name is Joe Spencer. I'm one of uh, Daniel Viesa's attorneys. I'm going to ask you some questions. Sure. If there's something you don't know, you don't understand, let me know, and I'm going to reword it or rephrase it. Is that fair enough? Yes, thank you. You and I have never met or spoken. Is that correct? Correct. So I understand your testimony this morning to the leading gentleman of the jury. You have no recollection whatsoever. Is that correct? Correct. Right. You, may I approach with us, Ron? Yes, sure. When you were working there at the Chevron station, uh, you, even after reading your statement, you have no recollection of, of what you put in your statement. Is that correct? That is correct, sir. Okay, fine. Uh, you didn't know the individual? No, sir. Uh, you hadn't seen him very many times? No, sir. Okay. Um, you really couldn't recognize him? Is that fair? Today, no. Huh? Today, no. You've never testified before? No, sir. This is the first time? Yes, sir. In over 25 years? Yes, sir. Is this your signature, ma'am? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, I'm going to show you what's in the back of your of your signature there. Even after looking at the photograph there, you still have no, do you have any recollection? Or could it have been another person that looks like this person? I don't. I can't say. You can't even say even after, with his signature here, that's the same person. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Correct, sir. So you can't even tell us that, correct? Correct. All right. Under oath, correct? Correct. Thank you, ma'am, for your honesty. Pass away, Mr. Ms. Montoya, if any more questions, can I release her and then make her ruling on what we're doing? I'd like to lay a bit, of, a bit more foundation. May I approach her to yes, stage 52? Mrs. Padilla, uh, in your statement, uh, you referenced that you you signed the back of the photo of Daniel Villegas, is that correct? Correct. Or the person that was claiming to you to be Daniel Villegas? Correct. And States 52 is that photograph, is that correct? Correct. But that is your signature on States 52? That is my signature. And it's dated the same day, the photograph and your statement are both dated March 9th of 1995, is that correct? That is correct. Okay. And ma'am, when you gave the statement, were you telling the truth? Yes, sir. Okay. Would you have any reason to lie about this back in 1995? No, sir. Okay. And would you tell this jury that what you said in the statement, even though you don't recall it at this point, is the truth? Yes, there's no reason for me to lie. Okay. Then, Your Honor, at this time, I, I would re-urge uh, admitting this as a recorded recollection, uh, and I would request permission to read it and not offer it as an exhibit. Mr. Spencer. Donna, she's indicating it lacks trustworthiness. She is, she's telling us she cannot tell if that's the person that she identified. Even the person that she said with her signature. She acknowledges her signature, but she's very honestly has said, I cannot say if that is the person that I saw. It lacks trustworthiness. Sustained. Thank you. Your Honor, I would ask that you, for limiting instruction to the jury, that they disregard all of the testimony they heard.
the record, sir, I do need your name. I need you to spell your last name for us. Oscar Gomez. G-O-M-E-Z. Mr. Montoya. Thank you, Judge. Good morning, sir. Uh, I'm going to need to speak a lot louder than that, okay? Can you can you scoot up a little bit to the microphone, or or right here on the edge, bring it down. Perfect. Uh, how are you doing today? Good, good, good. Perfect. Uh, could you please introduce yourself to the members of the jury? Tell them your name and where you work. Um, uh, my name is Oscar Gomez. I'm a care provider. And how long have you been a care provider, Mr. Gomez? About uh, seven months or almost a year. Almost a year? Mm -hmm. And Mr. Gomez, do you know the defendant, Daniel Villegas? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, can you tell us uh, what color of shirt he's wearing today? The color is uh, peach. Peach? All right. Your Honor, may the record reflect the witness has identified the defendant? Yes, sir. And Mr. Gomez, how do you know, how long have you known Daniel Villegas? A couple of, a lot of years. A lot Since of middle school. Middle school. We went to middle school together. Where did you go to middle school? McGoffin. McGoffin. And um, you went through all of middle school with, with Daniel? No, well, maybe about 7th, 8th grade. 7th and 8th grade. Okay. 8th grade. And uh, what is your relationship with him? Are you? Well, we were friends back then. Okay. What is your relationship now? Uh, we haven't talked in about over five years. Five years? Yeah. Would you consider him a friend still? Um, probably not. Okay. Back in uh, 1995, sir, 1994, 1995, were you still going to school then? 94, um, no, I don't think so. Okay. Did you go to high school, sir? Uh, just to ninth grade and then I got it up from there. Okay. Where did you go for ninth grade? Irvin. Irvin. Did the defendant go to Irvin with you or no? No, no, not that I know. Okay. Were you still hanging out with Daniel when you were in high school? Um, well, not that much because I had a son. Okay. I had my son back then and that I, I was with my wife and my son, okay. so I wasn't hanging around with him that much. Okay. Uh, when you did hang out with the defendant, where would you hang out with him? Um, he'll come over to my house and my mom would uh, cook dinner and he'll eat and uh, so I'll go over to his house, hang out there for a little bit and go back home. Okay. Where did you live back in uh, the 90s, 93, 94? On Bainbridge. On where? Bainbridge. Bainbridge? Yeah, it was the next street over Wren. Next street over from Wren. Mm -hmm. And Daniel Villegas lived on Wren. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, Hold on. Sir, do me a favor. Most people... Don't testify a lot. Yeah, speak like they do in the in, out in the public. Uh uh and uh uh and mm -hmm. she can't take that down. Yeah, the the machine doesn't register it. I need you to say yes or no. And I'm gonna correct you because it's gonna take a while for you to get used to that. Yes. Fair enough? Yes, sir. Thank you. Bainbridge is one street over from Wren. Is that yes, correct? Sir. And is it fair to say that you would walk to each other's houses? Yes. Okay. Do you remember when the defendant was arrested uh, for the Electric Street shooting? Yes, sir. Okay. How did you find out? The news. The news? The news, sir. Were you still friends with Daniel then? Uh, well, I haven't talked to him lately. I was friends with him, yes, okay. back then, but I haven't talked to him because I had a little son. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just seen it on the news. All right. Did you ever hang out with Daniel after he was arrested? Uh, yes, okay. one was one time. Okay. You know that he got out on bond? Yes. And after he got out on bond, how many times did you hang out with him? Oh, just once. Just once? Yes. And um, how was it that you all came to hang out at this time after he was let out on bond? Uh, I had called him and uh, he had told me that he was out on bond. If I wanted to go over and visit, that was the last time I would see him. He told you that would be the last time you'd see him? Yeah. Okay. Uh, did he say why? Well, he was going to prison. Okay. And when he came over, did you go to his house or you went to his house? I went to his house. You went to his house. Mm -hmm. And where did you hang out with him? In the front, in the back. Okay. Do you remember it's daytime, nighttime? 
It was in the about evening. In the evening. Okay. So was it dark outside? About three, four, four. No, it wasn't dark. Okay. It was about getting dark. Mm -hmm. All right. Do you remember, like, what month this was? No, sir. Okay. And when you got to his house, what happened? Um, we were just chilling and smoking cigarettes. Okay. Mm hmm Were you talking about anything? Uh, well, I had asked him uh, if he did it, but I don't remember if he said yes or no or shook his head. Okay. Uh-huh. Let me add, so you, were you talking about other things? Yeah, uh, not that I remember, well, not that I remember, it was a long, long time ago. Okay. I can't remember what we talked about. You don't remember what you talked about? Yes. But you asked him if he had committed the electric street shooting? Yes, I, I had asked him, uh-huh. You remember but, that? Yes. Okay. I had asked him. And uh, why did you ask him? Um, just wondering if we, uh, if we did it or what. Okay. Uh -huh. and, and what did he tell you when you asked him? See, I, I don't remember if he shook his head or yes or no or, or yeah or grin. I don't know. It was a long time ago, sir. It was a long time ago? Yes. Sir, do you remember, uh, have you ever said anything different before? Uh, yeah, well, when the detectives had arrested me, I, I, I told them what they wanted to hear because uh, uh, they wanted to take me to jail for my warrants. When and was he, that? When was that, sir? Um, I, I forgot the date, sir. But I, I was living on uh, about last year, I think, I want to say. About, 2014? Yes. It's four years ago. Four years ago. Okay, okay, okay. And what were you arrested on? Uh, they had arrested me for my warrants. I had traffic warrants. Traffic Three warrants? Three traffic warrants. And they wanted to ask you about this case, right? Uh, they, they First they told me that I was arrested because of my traffic warrants, that they were looking for me. And then when I got to the substation in Central, they had told me, uh, well, you know something, you know what this is about? And I told them that I did it. And then, uh, well, this is about Danny, Danny Viega's case, that we know that you, that you know something. Okay. Uh -huh. And you ended up telling them what? Uh, that uh, about me and Danny had a conversation about it. And what else did you tell them? Uh -huh. That he, he had said that he did it. Okay. Uh -huh. Were you aware that you were being recorded? Uh, well, I was there maybe uh, about an hour or two. Mm -hmm. And then after that, we were talking. Then after that, he started recording me. Okay. Excuse me, Your Honor. May I take this witness on the door? Have an opportunity to cross examine. I can take the jury out for one minute, though. All right. Please be seated. The judge we we're currently outside the presence of the jury. The court is taking the jury out because there has been some testimony so far from Mr. Gomez that there was a, a gathering with him and the accused at some point, I think he said in 95. I don't know if it was before the second trial or it had to have been before the second trial, but there was a mention, which I, the court does not have a concern with, that there may have been a lead statement by the accused uh, that he was going to prison. I need to make clear to the witness, you are not at any point to say that he in fact did go to prison. This jury is not supposed to know that there was a first trial, a second trial, and a hearing in 2011. I don't know if you spoke, if he was a witness in any of those cases, but whenever you talk about this case in front of this jury, uh, those trials are not to be mentioned, and the fact that he may have gone to prison and that you know that is not to be mentioned. Okay? Yes, sir. That's the only thing I wanted to make sure because that had been mentioned and you're about to ask him about that statement and he may offer that gratuitously and I wanted to make sure that didn't happen. Okay. Okay. Before the state attempts to write the statement, 
period, I want an opportunity to cross this way. My it, it, they attempt to introduce the statement. I'm going to object to it. Well, I, I do intend to impeach it with it, and then with the portion that he's not being consistent about, it's a very small portion, yes. and then that's it. Yes. And, uh, yes, if they're attempting to introduce it or to read into it, uh, we're going to we're going to hear from you waiting for that out. When this jury is ready to come back. Well, I, no, I, I would like to play the portion. Oh, he has been recorded? He has been. And there is a recorded interview. And I would like to play that to impeach him because he's saying that, that he's saying it just because the cops are making him. Is there a, a written statement or a, re, or a, a record? video recording? It, it's recorded. Though. I can play it for the besides the video recording, there's also a uh, transcript. They have to. It's really short. Of the video. You want to do it now? Yeah. Just so that you can see. Yeah. Right. And hold on, hold on. Sorry. It lacks trustworthiness is the reason why I want to take them on the diet. Well, we're going to we're, we're going to play it now. That way we can resolve this before okay. we bring this jury. Go ahead. Okay. And do you ask him about the shooting? Do you ask him about the murder? Yes. What, what happened? What happened in that conversation? Yes, I did ask him if, they, if he did it. If he did what? If he did, if he did the shooting, uh -huh. and he said yeah, he grinned and said yeah, yeah. And I, and I just told him that, oh, that's fucked up. That's it, Joe. I, I would like to impeach him with that in front of you. Mr. Spencer. May I take him on the back? Yes. Mr. Gomez, in the video statement that you uh, gave to the officers, you've seen it, haven't you? Yes. Okay. Um, before that video recording was done, you had already been talking to Detective Sanchez for approximately two hours before that. Yes, sir. Right. And Detective Sanchez told you, uh, you were handcuffed during the recording? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Before the recording started, you were in handcuffs, is that correct? Yes, sir. Right, okay. And then when you told Detective Sanchez that you don't remember, that Daniel didn't tell you anything, no admissions, he, he told you, no, 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 I'm going to make you remember, isn't that correct? Yes, sir. That's what he told you, correct? Yes, sir. Uh, and, you, and you told, and when you started to tell him, look, Daniel didn't say that, he, he grinned, he smiled, but he goes, it, it was, he was joking, but there was no admissions, you told him that, correct? Yes, sir. And he told you, I don't want to hear that. You need to save your own ass. Didn't he tell you that? Yes, sir. Those were the detective's words to you, right? Yes, sir. And you were scared, weren't you? Yes, sir. That this is all proper cross-examination for the witness in front of the jury. I don't I'm going to let you make that argument once he finishes his point on. Right. And then after a lengthy interrogation by Detective Sanchez, when you weren't being recorded, he tells you, I'm going to record you. And, and if you say anything different from what I want you to say, you're going to jail. Yes, for my warrants. That's what he told you, didn't he? Yes. Okay. And you told him, look, I'm going to tell you the truth. I don't think he committed the murders. You told him that, didn't you? Yes. And I don't think he made any admissions to me. You told him that, too. Yes. When you weren't being recorded, correct? Yes. Okay. And you felt that if you didn't tell him what you wanted, what he wanted you to say, that you were going to go to jail, correct? Yes, sir. He said if I paid $150, he'll let me out. So that's right. That's what he told you. That if you paid $150, he'd let you out, correct? Yes. Right. And when they went and picked you up, they told you, they picked you up under the pretext of there's warrants for your arrest, right? Yes, sir. So they, tickets. And then when they took you to detect to, to Detective Sanchez, you were surprised on the video when it's the tape starts to say well let's see why you're here because you'd already been talking to him for two hours correct yes he knew why you were there correct yes sir. then you found out it was under false pretenses that they picked you up correct yes sir and you had warrants out for traffic tickets is that correct yes sir two traffic tickets one and although they should have arrested you they let you go didn't they the detective yeah. says, I'll take care of it for you. Can you pay part of it? I'll get you on a payment plan. Yes, sir. I'll get you a deal. And, then I, and, and they released you, and they didn't take you in jail, correct? No, yes, I paid $150, and I got released.
and the detective said, as long as you help me out, I'm going to let you go. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And then he told you, and don't you talk to the defense lawyers. Is that what the detective yes, told sir. you? Yes, sir. Don't talk to anyone. All right. This last total untrustworthiness, Judge. Thank you. Mr. Montoya, make your argument. Judge, I think this is all valid cross-examination in front of the jury. Uh, they want to get into whether or not I mean, we can bring Detective Sanchez in. He can be questioned about it, too. But these are all proper questions for the jury uh, to determine whether Mr. Gomez is done with we're going to bring the jury back in. You're going to be allowed to play that tape, and that's proper for cross-examination, which you put on more dire. Let's bring the jury in. Record in calls number 94. 0D09328, the state of Texas versus Daniel Riegas. Uh, the records reflect the jury is back in the courtroom. Mr. Montoya, you may continue with your direct examination. Thank you, Judge. Mr. Gomez, before the little break, um, I asked you, you said that when you met with the defendant in 1995, you explicitly asked him, did you do the shooting? Yes, sir. And your testimony here today is that, is what? How did he respond? I'm not sure I don't remember if he grinned or laughed or said no. Grinned or laughed or said no? I said no. It okay. was a long time ago. All right. So I'm going to play a statement that you gave for an interview that you had with Detective Sanchez in 2014, okay? Yes, sir. And do you ask him about the shooting? Do you ask him about the murder? Or yes. What happened? I remember that conversation. Yes, I did ask him, like, did he do it? Did he do it? Did he do it? Did he do it? And he did and he did the shooting uh -huh. and he said yeah, he grinned and said yeah, yeah. And I, I just told him that no, oh, it's fucked up. And so sir, in twenty fourteen, when you were interviewed by Detective Sanchez, you told him that the defendant told you yeah, he did do the shooting. Yes, sir, I told him. Okay. And you said that he had grinned. No, uh, yes, sir, I, that's what he wanted to hear. That's what, who wanted to hear? The detective. The detective, okay. So he, you're saying that he made you say that? Uh, yes. And... Uh, Look, I tried to tell him that I didn't remember it. Okay. Who was not taking it? Sure. But you remember asking him? Asking Daniel? Yes. yes. And how did you react when whatever he told you? Jersey, I don't know, it just... Look, I, like, I don't know, I don't remember. You don't remember? After that, I don't remember what happened. Okay. Did you? Mm -hmm. All right. Sir, since then, <clears throat> since 2014, uh, have you met with Daniel? Since uh, when he got out of prison, uh -huh, when we were doing the... When, when he got out? Yes. You've met with him? Mm-hmm. Have you met? Is that yes? Yes. Okay. Have, have you met with uh, the defense attorneys in this case? Yes. Okay. How many times? Once. Once? When was that? Right after I talked to the detectives. Okay. How soon after? Maybe a couple of days, a week, I want to say. Okay. So you, you were interviewed with, by Detective Sanchez? Yes. And then a few days later, you met with Mr. Villegas' defense attorney? Yes. Okay. And uh, have you ever met with John Mimbello? Uh, no. Never? No. Nope. Okay. Just uh, when we would do the rallies? Okay. Yeah, just hide and buy, that's it. Okay. Now, sir, uh, who is Jenny Gomez? She's my niece. She's your niece? Yes. Uh, Is it fair to call her a girlfriend of Daniel's? No, uh, he, when he was in jail. Let me stop you right uh -huh. there. Was it fair to call her a girlfriend? Mm. Or a friend? A friend. Okay. More like a friend. Okay. Right. So is it fair to say that your family knows Daniel's family? Yes. Okay. Still good friends with Daniel's family? Is she? Uh, no, you're not sure. Your family. 
My family is. Uh, not my family, probably she still talks to them. Okay. I haven't talked to her. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Gomez. I passed the minister. Mr. Spencer. Mr. Gomez, morning. Good morning. Did you know I'm Joe Spencer? I represent Daniel Villegas. I'm one of his attorneys. I'm going to ask you some questions yes, about this videotape that, uh, or this clip that you said. When the detectives picked you up, you were picked up on a warrant roundup. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Because you had take traffic tickets. Is that take correct? Traffic tickets. All right. But then they took you. Then they took you to uh, the Crimes Against Persons uh, office, is that correct? Yeah, the substation in Central. And you spoke with Detective Sanchez for about two hours, correct? Yes, sir. Because you've seen the video of your statement, correct? Yes, sir. I right. spoke with him two hours before he turned that on. And before the video statement was recorded, they had talked to you for several hours? Two hours, about, yes, sir. Right. Two. And they told you that they wanted to talk to you about Daniel Villegas, correct? That's what they told me I was there for. Right, and they told you that they wanted you to say that Daniel had done, admitted to you he'd done the shooting. Yes, sir. And you told them back then at the beginning, that didn't happen. He didn't tell me that. Uh -huh. I told him I didn't remember. You told him you it didn't was remember? too long ago. And he told you, no, 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 I'm going to make you remember. Is that what he told you? Yes. And he told you that if you didn't say what he wanted you to say, that he was going to put you in jail. Yes. And that's what he told you, didn't he? Yes, sir. And there were several times that you attempted to tell him, look, he didn't tell me that. He didn't make any admissions. And Detective Sanchez told you, I don't want to hear that. Yes, sir. Right. And in fact, he told you, look, I'll let you go. If you pay $150 of what you got, I'll get you, I'll be able to release you. And I'll cut you a deal, yes, sir. I'll cut you a deal. And you paid him $150. I'll give him $150. So they can let you go. Yes, sir. I didn't want to go to jail. Yes, sir. Because you had traffic tickets and warrants. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And that and they never arrested you for the traffic tickets. No, ticket. no, sir. Uh, they were since 2000. I tried I try to turn myself in, and they didn't want to take me, so they picked me up. And they told you that in a little while I'm going to turn on a video recording, and I'm going to record your statement. And if you say anything different than what I want you to say. You're going to go to jail. Yes, sir. That's what he told you, Oscar. Yes, sir. And you specifically told him, look, he didn't make those admissions to me. Let me ask you something. Were you scared when you were in the detective's office? Yes, sir, I was. Okay, I got to tell you something, Mr. Gomez. You look like a kind of tough guy with the, with the tattoos on your face, your, your head or anything. Are you a tough guy? <laughs> no. You didn't want to go to jail, did you? No, sir, I didn't. And you told him whatever he wanted to hear so they would let you go? Yes, sir. That wasn't right, was it? No, sir. And then in the recording, when they start the conversation, the detective starts saying, now, uh, he's making a conversation that's being recorded as if he had never talked to you, correct? Yes. And, but then there's a little yes. statement there in that recording that says, when we were talking early, earlier, that indicated that, yeah, you knew why he, he would, you were there to him because he had been talking to you for several hours, correct? Yes, sir. For, yes. And he told you, you better not talk to the defense lawyers of Daniel. Yes, Diego. sir. And about a week or two after you gave that recording, you knew you had done something wrong. Yes, sir. Yeah, I did. And it was bothering you because it was wrong what that detective made you do. Yes, sir. Okay. And you, you finally reached out and we spoke, didn't we? Yes, sir. I didn't know who to run to. And when we spoke, I said, well, let me show you the video statement, Oscar, that I got from the state. And that's when I said, you saw the whole statement, correct? Yes. And that's the first time you saw the statement, you said, that's not all of it. And that's when I said, what do you mean? And you told me, let me tell you what happened before. And let me tell you what they told me that's not on the tape. And let me tell you how they threatened me. And let me tell you how they told me, if you don't say what you want, you're going to go to jail. And he told you, you better save your own ass. Is that what he told yes, you? Yes, sir. Pessimists. Mr. Gomez, the conversation that you had back with Daniel in 1995, 
when you asked them, did you do the shootings? How many people did you tell about that conversation? Just, just one, my niece. Okay. Mm -hmm. I guess. You, so you told your niece that back in 1995, you had this conversation with Dan. Yeah. Okay. How do you think the detectives knew that you had this conversation with Dan? Jackson speculation. Sir, answer only if you have personal knowledge. If you don't know how they found out, your answer is I don't know. If you know how they found out, please answer the question. I didn't know how they found out at first. Okay. Well, yeah, what did you tell your niece? That, um, that I'm not sure if he's guilty. Uh huh. And uh, she probably turned it around. I see. Mm hmm. And so the detectives just came and plucked you out of thin air and they knew that you had had this conversation. But Jack argumentative, Your Honor? Okay. Yes, because it was a long time ago, and I didn't remember who I, who I told. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Mr. Gomez. I did it. All right. Mr. Spencer, any more questions? Nothing further, Your Honor. Thank you, sir. You may step down. We do need to have a phone number where you can be reached. And if we need you back here, I need you back within 45 minutes of that call. Okay. They have my phone number, sir. Thank you. Call your next witness. This time and I have the state arrests. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the state has put on all the evidence they wish to present during their case in chief. Uh, I do need to take up some matters uh, that do not concern you. Uh, I'd rather give you about a 10 minute break and then later on give you your morning break. So we're going to do that. So uh, go back into the jury. <laughs> Please be seated. Which should reflect that we're currently outside the presence of the jury to take up any legal matters that may need to be taken up uh, before we uh, determine how we're proceeding. Mr. Valenzuela, you are at the podium. Your Honor, at this time, Defendant uh, Danny Banks moves for a directed verdict. As the court knows, Mr. Banks is charged with capital murder. Because this is a capital murder case, the Eighth Amendment to the United States Constitution requires a greater degree of accuracy and fact-finding that would be true in a non-capital murder case. Despite this greater degree of accuracy, not one scintilla of evidence has been presented. It's extraordinary that even the state itself has failed to call even one of its case detectives, even one of its law enforcement detectives. Not a single one. There's not one piece of physical evidence that links any of, of the allegations to Mr. Villegas. Not a single piece. In fact, all of their strongest witnesses have retracted all their statements. Every single one. All the rest of the testimony can't even be considered evidence. It's based on secondhand data. It's based on uh, corrupted memory. It's based on pure gossip. And this is a court of law, not a court of gossip. Not one of these witnesses, any of the evidence that they try to present, not a single one can even remotely be considered a scintilla of evidence. And because this is a capital murder case, we require a higher degree of fact-finding, a higher degree of accuracy. The state has failed its burden to present even a scintilla of evidence. And for that reason, we move the court to grant a directed verdict. Mr. Montoya, Ms. Butterworth. Your Honor, we would respectfully uh, request that you deny this motion. Uh, as the court is well aware and the defense, the standard is a scintilla of evidence. And what has become before this court is uh, law, law enforcement. We've had law enforcement testify as far as the um, physical evidence in this particular case that was left from this particular capital murder. Uh, we do have retracted statements, but we believe, and we believe it should be in the jury's hands, on how reliable the retractions are uh, based on what's going on. We've given the jury, or we're hoping to give the jury, the statement of David Ronhell who back in 1993 
uh, came forward and gave to the detectives his information regarding the capital murder, citing that it was his defense or his cousin that told him he did it. He has since retracted in the sense of he's still maintaining that everything his cousin told him was true in that statement, but that he was joking and that the detectives threatened him and whatever whatever it is that the defense is presenting as far as the detectives are concerned, we believe it is up to the jury and their province to decide whether or not David Ronhell came forward and gave this information and then was under pressure by family afterwards to have to say or explain why he came forward and gave that credible evidence. Um, we have also called Oscar Gomez, who we believe initially in 2014 also gave the detectives another piece of evidence citing that the defendant was his friend and back in 1995 his, def his friend told him he did it. He also has since uh, retracted that statement after meeting with the defense and I believe that the jury should decide what they want to as far as the reasons why someone would retract a statement whether it was credible at the time it was given. Um, this isn't gossip, nobody, this isn't second-hand hearsay, these are statements that have been made by the accused, this isn't hearsay that was somehow allowed in despite your gatekeeping abilities, these are statements by the accused that we're asking to let a jury in El Paso to decide if what they originally said was true or what they want to say now on the stand after they've been influenced or encouraged to say otherwise. You know as well as I do, Judge, that this happens every day in a court of law where a witness has said one thing and wants to come back later and say something different. And it's the jury to decide the credibility of that witness and whether they were telling the truth then or in the courtroom. Uh, we have made and presented evidence on every single element of this, of this case and we're asking that you give this to the jury to decide the guilt. We have presented more than beyond a scintilla of evidence. Anything else, Mr. Rollins? Just briefly, Judge. As Ms. Budworth noted, the court is the gatekeeper, and all the evidence they presented has been impeachment. Not substantive evidence, pure impeachment. It's undisputed that Detective Marquez coursed all the statements. So these attractions are based on the original statement that was an accurate statement in the first place. None of it is remotely reliable, in, even, in, even to arise to scintilla. That's why we respectfully ask the court to grant the direct verdict. motion for directed verdict is denied. We have the jury out. I need to know if we're ready, if you are going to present any uh, evidence. I should tell you at this moment I have to visit with uh, Mr. Villegas and uh, should I give him the 20 minute morning break and we'll know in 20 minutes? I, I, we hope to know in 20 minutes because the other issue is gathering our witnesses. Uh, I expected certain, some substantial uh, evidence from the state. Uh, let me know uh, before the 20 minute break uh, whether we're ready to proceed or if we're not ready to proceed when we would be ready to proceed. Fair enough. All right.